yeah, me and tune into the Young Sets of Truth podcast with your brother, Oh God and Sam. And going in on this Monday, almost through the month. We had a powerful, powerful, you know, um, opening month to the podcast. Um, definitely a plan on doing a lot of big things, you know, this year. So we do appreciate all, you know, the listeners, man. But we got a little bit of a lineup today. It's not a lot really popping but it's some stories that we want to share with y'all you know starting off with this michael jackson you know story um in one second all right so a new documentary called leaving netherland has pretty much been making its rounds at the sundance film festival and it's getting a lot of people are really starting to change their perception about michael jackson but his family michael jackson's family is livid at this documentary and they released a statement you know, via media, and they say, Michael, always turn the other cheek. And when always we turn the other cheek, when people have gone after family members and of our family, this is the Jackson way, the statement read, but we just can't stand by while this public lynching goes on. Michael was not here to defend himself. Otherwise, these allegations would not have been made. Now, the Sundance Film Festival was running a film for people who don't know called Leaving Netherland, where they pretty much detailing Michael Jackson's uh, relationship with the seven-year-old boy, you know, with another young man. They're pretty much they're saying that, you know, he was performing sexual acts and pretty much grooming, you know, um, these young, you know, children. Now, according to Robeson, the abuse started when he was uh, visiting his family at the Neverland Ranch, you know, in Santa, Santa Maria, California, when he was seven years old. Now, according to the allegations, Jackson performed oral sex on Robeson and asked him to do the same in return. He would also ask Robeson to get on all fours and expose his anus while Jackson masturbated. Robeson says the abuse continued until he was 14 years old. He says in the doc that once he went through puberty and after one instance of attentive anal sex, Jackson, you know, was not interested in him after, after he went, you know, through puberty. Um, it also must be noted that Jackson was brought up, you know, on charges, but was acquitted. He was acquitted, you know, for this, you know, but these guys now, it's a documentary, almost like the R. Kelly situation, don't want to really intertwine them. But now people are looking at Michael Jackson like he's a pedophile, even though the fact that he's been acquitted, found not guilty of this charge. Sam, man, what do you think about Leaving Netherland? Um, another film, you know, tarnishing another um, legend of ours. What do you think about that? Well, a lot of people are trying to say, and I see a lot of people on social media saying, well, after this R. Kelly dragon, we got to make sure that we keep the same energy for this Michael Jackson situation. And wow. I disagree with that because unlike R. Kelly, who had forged documents, a marriage license with a 15 year old girl, uh, a, a sex tape who everyone who's seen it with two eyes knows it was him. Mm -hmm. though you got to quit it and then you got a situation with michael jackson where you have a lot of very disgusting negative real just <sighs> passe kind of rumors yeah things that he's been acquitted for and things that all of the people that have been outspoken about him doing these disgusting things have all said they were lies including the two gentlemen that are in this documentary. Absolutely. Robinson testified at a trial that he slept in Jackson's room many times, but that Jackson never molested him. Save Chuck made the same statements to investigators as a boy. So both of these two men said it. We all know Michael Jackson died in 2009. They want to come back out in 2013 and say that they, due to stress and trauma, were forced to face them and face the truth and admit that they were sexually abused. And then they do civil suits. But they're both also known as... Lying motherfuckers, let's just call it for what it is. Whew, yeah. Lying motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. So when you have a situation where a man is no longer here to defend himself, yes, sir. Whether you think he did it, whether you think he didn't, you no longer have a man here to defend himself. How can you just throw so much taint and so pause or and so much this terrible um what's the word I'm looking for? It's just disgusting this, yeah, this stain on somebody's stain name. on somebody's name. Mm -hmm. How can you do that? Yeah, yeah, it's sick. It's sick, you know. Um, and this is, you know, it's not fair because when they had the opportunity was presented for them to take this brother down, they, you know, went in front of the courts, you know, um, and told them, you know, that that nothing ever happened. So, um, the court, you know, which we put our trust in, obviously, you know, any other time, found out that it was, well, you know, that it wasn't enough evidence to bring this brother, uh, Michael Jackson, up on charges. 
But now you have a film that comes out after the man is dead that depicts him in a certain way. And not only that, you know, a lot of people are saying that the film was very one sided, that the, um, you know, the um, the uh, director of the film didn't want to really do interviews where he could be really be challenged. So there's a lot of, you know, things that, that go on to say, you know, that this is um, really an attack a slander defamation on Michael Jackson to uh, exploit him for even more money, you know, and to, to destroy his image, you know, even further. I mean, it's like, once you go to the court, that's all we can go with. They don't have enough evidence to convict. You can't come back and say, Oh yeah, he did it. Mm. And expect us to believe you. We got to call you, you know, we feel you are. And that is a liar at this point. That's just what we feel, you know, looking at the evidence in front of us. Well, we asked ourselves a question in our Kelly situation. I have to keep bringing up our Kelly. And as far as are they setting him up? Is somebody trying to destroy the legacy and name of R. Kelly? And we say, well, does he own his own music? And obviously he doesn't. Does Michael Jackson own his music? Yeah, he owns a lot of his music and a lot of other people's music, a lot of legendary mm -hmm. catalogs out here. Michael Jackson is very connected. We all know how this music industry works. We all know how these masters work out here when it comes to their masters and other people's masters. So when you look at why, when you ask yourself, why would they want to take down someone like Michael Jackson? Why would these disgusting allegations? Because we all know how do you have someone turn on them, somebody else? Go ahead and tell you they did something to a child. We all know Michael Jackson loved children. He was just generally just loved kids. And maybe mm -hmm. he was somebody that didn't quite under or was understood like you and I maybe understand something. But that doesn't mean that he's molesting children. Right. He was an open book. His shit was open. Everyone was able to go in there and see what they needed to see. No one ever said they were molested. Now you have certain reports that came out and said this and then that that was said, uh, brought up in court. If Michael Jackson was guilty of any of those accounts, trust and believe during those oh, times yeah. the height of his career, his ass would have been in jail. Didn't matter mm -hmm. how much money he had or anything. Fact. He sat in, uh, in courts numerous times throughout his career for the same situation and never was brought up on anything. You ask yourself why mm -hmm. they want that money. Well, let, 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 let me just, you know, I got I got to, you know, read uh, Robeson and Safe Ducks. They made a uh, statement because people were coming after him about the money. Yeah. They say um, they made it clear they were never offered. Any partic any compensation, excuse me, for participating in leaving Neverland. They say we are just trying to tell the story to shine light on it, says Safe Chuck. The same way, knowing Wade went through this, we can give other people the connection and comfort that we receive. So they said they didn't receive any compensation at all, at all, you know, for this film. They just wanted to tell their story. What are your thoughts on that? You okay? So you put your name out there, so now you can get interviews. You can sit on ABC. Yeah, you can do here. Don't fucking play me with no goddamn. Woo! You didn't make no money on this. You made plenty <laughs> of money from this. Your pieces of shit. And that's with all disrespect, because I sit here and ask you. You had reports on him that he molested you. You sat in court. If you really wanted justice, then you would have had his ass sitting in jail. If he really did these disgusting things to you, or. Like a OJ situation, when you see the Goldmans, they sat there and filed a civil suit. They're getting money for this situation, whether you're guilty, found guilty or not. We're getting compensation because we know you did wrong. You didn't file a civil suit then. No money was passed around. Now, all of a sudden, you get this moral fucking compass and want to go ahead and do a documentary so mm -hmm. that you may not be getting compensated. But, oh, you can go ahead and do some interviews like a lot of other these people that did documentaries are doing right now. They're cashing in. And at least the books and at least to okay. all different things, you know, opportunities that we may never when we're forgetting about this they'll still be making money off his legacy that's what it looks like you know here again we weren't there so i do want to make it clear but um you know the fact that you know the opportunity was presented you know to pull this man down um if it was true they found that it wasn't true they they testified under oath it is what it is that's the only thing we can go with at this point was on the court record and it appears that michael jackson was innocent of that so this documentary right now is um you know slanderous um now it doesn't say make it clear whether the family is going to go after them you know um to try to sue them i think it, they can but i think it may be a long shot of this defamation and slander you know what i mean on, on the estate of michael jackson so I, I do expect them to so that'd be interesting to see how that unfolds let's make this a learning lesson for everybody if you have a child if you're a parent of a child don't leave your fucking kid with anybody you don't know I don't care if it's Michael Jackson. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's this person, that person. I don't care how much you think you trust them. If that's your child and that's your baby and there ain't no other babies running around like a birthday party, mm -hmm. don't leave your kid with them. It's that that in itself is very suspicious for a parent to just go ahead and willingly drop a other a boy off to a grown ass man's house. Right. Right. That at that point is knowingly out here, whether it be true or not, 
for doing nasty things, in particular to little boys. So you go ahead and willingly go ahead. Now, Wade Robinson was a choreographer. He used to dance mm -hmm. and all this shit. Why leave your kid over there? That's that's something crazy that you got to really question. So just to take it up as a learning lesson, if you find yourself in a situation, be there with your kids. Yeah, no doubt. Be there with your kid. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But you're tuned into the Uncensored Truth podcast with your brother, Old God and Sandman, blowing through your speakers.